Great to see you. Thanks for being with us. Everybody's talked about the chip shortage. That's been a big story in 2021 during the pandemic in particular. So now the question is how companies are adjusting to the limited supply. And I'm actually hearing some double ordering and things like that. Hey, Nicole, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, that was interesting. There is a story in the Wall Street Journal this morning about uh, middlemen in the chip business uh, making a ton of money now. Uh, it's it's really uh, COVID has uh, has created some some tremendous supply chain issues, and uh, and car companies, um, any 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 kind really any any company that does electronics now is, is having these issues getting these chips, and as a result, uh, we're seeing this being. Uh, uh, investment that needs to happen uh, from from a lot of countries, seeing that now they have to uh, spend billions and billions so they can provide chips for 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 the growth uh, going forward. Uh, and as a result, we 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 see uh, that uh, capital expenditures happening over the next three to five years. Um, so I, I have some ideas there. Where we have some ideas at Gerber Kawasaki are, as to who's going to benefit the most from 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 this. Uh, uh, capital expenditures, uh, and one of them is a company called uh, ASML, uh, which is a Dutch company, and they actually uh, what they do is they they, they build or, or, or the machines that that are used to build chips. Uh, so as we see uh, some some of these uh, uh, huge tens of billions of dollars of investments, uh, they have to buy machines to make these chips, and uh, ASML would be a huge uh, benefit benefactor from that. Yeah, and before I get to some of the other picks that are in different categories, um, Taiwan Semi, Samsung, Intel, we've been watching the trends and some stories pertaining to added investments and things like that. Any of those stories sort of overlap what you're thinking here? Yeah. So your previous guest uh, was talking about NVIDIA and ARM, Arm Holdings, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Qualcomm as well. Not, none of these companies actually manufacture their own chips. Uh, they're, they're called tablets, which means that they actually have to to, to hire companies to, to to manufacture. And those companies are Taiwan Semiconductors and Samsung. So they they really have a monopoly there. However, when 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 TSMC or Taiwan and, and Samsung have to build these uh, these um, uh, these large fabs or 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 or, or uh, uh, chip manufacturing hubs, uh, they need to to buy machines to do so. And that's why uh, ASML we think is is really the best play there. Right. Yeah. OK. And then I wanted to turn your attention to two other things, Lennar and MGM, two names on your list. Uh, I mean, let's start with Lennar. I think the home building story has been an interesting one. Um, everybody rushed to buy homes, but now some of the elements have changed, whether you already bought it. Uh, lumber prices and things were on the rise, though they're coming back a little bit. What is it about Lennar that you're watching most closely? Um so they actually they, they report on Thursday. So we're looking forward to hearing what their numbers look like. We expect a 40% growth probably. Uh, what I like about Lennar is is that is where they are. They are in, in the in the southeast, uh, Florida, Atlanta. You know areas actually that are benefited from from people moving during COVID. Sure. Uh, they also yep. yeah. It's it, it's so we we really like that. They also a uh, high end home builder. Uh, their average sale price is uh, about a hundred thousand uh, dollars more than other home builders. Uh, so, so I think as people value being at home more and and really want to be somewhere nice, Lennar is is kind of that provider there. And they also have a, a bit of a of a, a fintech kind of spin through Open Door. Uh, so I think really they they tick a lot of boxes, and also they pulled back a bit. So it's it's a it's a good time to get in. Right. Yeah. I know. And you know. I the story about rising rates hasn't really come to fruition, at, re at least right now. There was a worry that rates would be on the rise. Remember, they were really running hot at one point. Yeah. They ran to 1.7 for the 10-year, for example, which really could ultimately really push things like mortgage rates. But you're not seeing that, at least not for now. It, it was a head scratcher. You know, you got, you got high inflation numbers last week, and yet rates go down to 1.4, 1.5 on the 10-year. Um, I, I think, you know, we're, we're just not going to see rates go up that much for a long time. There's just too much money being printed um, uh, for right now. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and we don't okay. we don't see we don't we don't see that being a, being an issue right now. Yeah. 
That's not the problem, right? Maybe the liquidity, too much liquidity might be the problem. Tell me about MGM. Is it just the hotel story overall? Is it the casino story? People want to just get out, right? Uh, I, I, I live in LA and, and we're opening the we're opening California on tomorrow, actually the 15th. I think there is so much pent up demand. People want to travel, people want to go some places. Uh, we're seeing some numbers from Las Vegas that uh, on the weekend we get a 90% occupancy rates. Uh, and this is the summer, it's really hot over there. Uh, so you just you're just seeing people getting out there and trying to do things after really being cooped up for for a long time, and MGM being the the managing the most rooms in, in Las Vegas will will be a big big uh, uh, benefactor from that from that trend. So we really like them. They have they're very well run. They have a ton of liquidity, and then also we're seeing that you know uh, a lot of the business travel or at least convention business is coming back next year. Uh, bookings are high. Uh, so, so you, so, so, so the one, the one part that's that was that was weak is also going to come back next year. People will still want to do conventions and so forth. So we're very bullish on it longer, long, longer term.